today I'm going to be just doing a few uh, number three problems on Alchemist. So what I'm going to do is just, I'm, I'll just be getting some random problems and then I'll just run through how to solve each of them. So I'm, I will be live solving these, so I do not know the answer to these yet, so yeah, let's just see how it goes. So the first question here, what is the least positive integer divisible by each of the first composite numbers? So for each of these questions, I will explain my thinking. So first when you see a problem, you need to be able to understand the problem, especially ones with some complex wording, like this one. Right, so we need to find an integer so that it's divisible by all the first five composite numbers. So first we need to list out all the first five composite numbers. What would that be? So that would be, so four is a composite number, six is a composite number, 8 is a composite number, and 9 is a composite number. Note that 1 is not a composite number because it does not have more than 2 factors, even though it is not prime. So we want an integer that is ruled by 4, 6, 8, and 9. And we want the smallest possible, so that's just going to be the LCM of all of these numbers. So what we do is we kind of just factorize these, so this is going to be 2 squared, this is 2 times 3. This is 2 cubed and this is 3 squared. So what we want to do is find the largest power of all the different prime powers. So the largest power of 2 here we need is a power, is power of 2 cubed. And then the largest power of 3 is 3 squared. And we don't need any others. So that's just going to be 2 cubed times 3 squared. So that is 8 times 9 is 72. Hmm. What do I do wrong? Okay. Oh, it's first five, sorry. So it's four, six, eight, nine, ten. There we go. Okay, so with this extra ten in, that means we also have a factor of five. So that means we're going to do uh, two cubed times three squared times five, which is uh, just 72 times five, and that is going to be 360. There we go. Next, what is the unique three digit positive integer x satisfying? 100x is congruent to 1 mod 997. So we're basically just trying to find the multiplicative inverse of 1 mod 997. Right, so these problems, uh, how you approach it is just usually just try a few values of x and see what happens. So you notice that if x, if we set x to 10, then it will become 3 mod 997. So then what we can do is, so that means if x equals 10, I'll write this down, then, then that means uh, 100x is 3 mod 997. Uh, I don't have a congruent symbol, so I'll just use the equal symbol. Right, so what we can do is the multiplicative inverse of 3 mod 997 is actually pretty easy to find because uh, 3 is quite a small number. So if we want to find a multiplicative inverse of 3 mod 997, that's just going to be... So what you do is 997, so 990, so the first option is just 1, 1 is not as by 3. Then if you add another 997, 998 is also not, that means you have to have, add one more 997, so that would become 997 plus 997 is going to be 1994, and then if you add one that's 1995, and then that means divisible by 3, so you divide it by 3, that's going to be, so 1995 over 3 is... Uh, just ignore this, it's not correct, I'm just, because I'm just working it out, so, 195 divided by 3, so that's going to be 665. Right, so that means if, if 100x, right, so, if uh, 100x, so that means if we make x, uh, 665 times 10 
then that's going to give 1,197. So 605 times 10, so that means uh, x would need to be 6650. However, since x has to be less than 997, because we're doing more than 997, we just have to subtract a few copies of 997. So, because since it starts at 6 and this is about 1000, means you can subtract about off about 6000. Now it's not exactly 6000, so 997 times 6, that's just going to be 6000 minus 3 times 6, so that's going to be 5, 9, 8, 4, no, no 2, that should be correct. So if we just subtract that off, that means that's just going to be uh, 18 plus 650, so x is 668, that should be correct. Yes.